Caroline and welcome to my home on the hillside here in Wales and today I've got a real strawberry treat for you. It's the middle of summer, strawberries always remind me of summer and they are my favourite summer fruit. So let's get right over to my studio and have a look at some of the things I'm going to make with a strawberry theme. So for this project, I've got myself a book. Any book will do. You can get a different size book, whatever suits you. I got these free. I had a set, of, well, five of them from a charity shop and they were in the free tub. So I thought, oh, I'm sure I'll find something to do with those. They're dark blue. I would have preferred them white, but that's not a problem. I've got some balsa wood, some lace and a little label. So to start this project, I'm going to take this book and it's got lots of pages in that will come in useful for another project but I'm going to take them out of this book because I don't want them in there. And we're left with this. Now that doesn't look very pretty, but it's not a problem. So now I'm going to take these pieces of balsa wood that I cut to fit where the actual pages of the book used to be. And now I'm going to just glue them into place with my hot gun. And now, when I close the book, it just looks like a book. Now out with the Rust-Oleum chalk finish paint in chalk white, and I'm going to paint the whole thing front, back, inside and out. So I put two coats of paint on this. Now, if you're not going to do the next step and cover this with lace, you'll need to do a much neater job. But I'll be fine here because this is going to get covered. I've got this old piece of neck curtain, which, as you can see, if I put that over the blue, really wouldn't have worked. But over the white, isn't that going to be gorgeous? So I'm going to use my Aileen's Tacky Glue and glue this to the front cover first. And I'm leaving a bit of an overhang. You can tuck this in if you want to, but I quite like the idea where this has got a bit of a frill to leave it like that. So now I'm going to neaten up the inside. It's a bit of a mess. So I'm going to cut where the spine goes and then glue that up in there. Now I'm going to trim this a little bit closer because there's an awful lot of lace to be tucking otherwise. If you're using a more dense lace, you don't have to put clips on, but because there are very large spaces on this, I'm just giving it some clips to give it some additional hold until the glue is dry. As an alternative to using this many clips, you can use hot glue, but the problem is it can be a bit lumpy. So I'd rather use something like tacky glue with this. Just stick in a little bit more down there. Now, while that's drying, we can close the book and get on with the front. So for the front, I've got this little sticker saying fresh strawberries. And there's a little space there, so you can write something on there like... Uh, summer photographs or souvenirs and all the things you picked up through the summer. So you can use this box for whatever you like, even just memories. And on with the label where you fancy. It can be either near the top, near the bottom, in the middle. And then pop it on. I've used more glue than I would like to normally, which does mean there's a bit of a risk of this starting to bubble up a little bit. But because it's got to go through the lace as well, I think it's the only alternative really. Now we need to put a little bit of a surround around the strawberries. So I'm going to use this. It's like a lace and I've threaded through some ribbon. Now my ribbon's a little bit thick really, so it's folded at the back, but that's not a problem. Being crafters, we can usually come up with some adaptation that'll work. So that is the front end. Now, if you want to, you could even add something here with like a photograph of an example of what's inside or something like that. You could add a little pretty bow. It's up to you. I'm liking the simplicity of this. So I'm going to leave it as it is. So I stick a piece of paper into the bottom of the little compartment here and then add a little bit of lace top and bottom just to add a little bit more frilliness to it. But you can completely skip this section and just leave it as it was. So now it's time to neaten up the rest of the inside and I'm going to use this piece of, it's a, like a fabric-y paper. So 
So I'll use that on the spine because it's a bit more flexible and so it's less likely to just crease and not look so pretty. And I'm going to pop this on using my glue gun. Take that off there. Oops. So now I'm going to add some ribbon down the side here mainly because the spine isn't taking the crease in that I was hoped and it's cracking off and you can see the blue book underneath. So just by popping a little bit on the top, nobody will ever know that and it looks so much better. I had a bit of an issue with some of the clamps when I took them off the lace. You can see here, they gave it a bit too much tag and broke the grip from the glue, which was really frustrating. So I'm just going over those with a glue gun to make it really quick. You can re-glue them with something gentler than hot glue, but for the purpose of this video, I need to get finished, so I'm using hot glue. As a finishing touch, I've added this little bow that you can tie the book close with. I just think it looks really nice. Now, for the sake of full disclosure, I will say that when I was making this book, I didn't notice and I made it upside down. They've got the floppy bit on the back, but still, it still looks good. I think that looks pretty, and that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. With the Aileen's Tacky Glue, you really need a longer drying time. I was rushing, so things didn't get a chance to dry properly, and I had a few issues with the little clamps. So I just fixed the glue with the glue gun. It does almost as good a job as using the tacky glue and it's just so much faster to work with. Right, let's have a look what this looks like up on my display. project I'm going to take this little pot I think that's supposed to be a plum as you can see the most of the paint has worn off and I don't want it to be a plum I want it to be a strawberry so we're going to change it up the first thing I'm going to do is put a couple of coats of white chalk paint onto this and then we can start to decorate it and make it look more like a strawberry pot You may get away with one coat of red acrylic paint on your strawberries and your bows. It all depends what quality paint you're using, what make of paint you're using. I'm going to need the two coats. So after I've painted the whatever they are, the plums to look like strawberries, I'm now going to work on the bow and turn that into a pretty red bow that will go with the strawberry theme. I'm now going to use my little dotting tool and I'm going to add some little dots on the strawberry. So I've tried a few different colours. And I think this is going to be the best one. And then just draw some dots, or dot some dots, onto your strawberry. And now I'm going to turn the ribbon into a spotty ribbon. I'm not going to use a dotting tool this time. I'm going to use the end of this skewer because I want these to be very round. It doesn't matter so much with the seeds. And I can't find my little dotting tools that are perfectly round, so I'm using the end of this. I always like to start this sort of thing at the back, and that way then, if it makes a bit of a mess as you're first practising, it doesn't matter. But I think that's quite good. The biggest trick I find with this is getting the right amount of paint. Too much and it blobs too big, too little, and it just makes a... It's not a round mark, it's just an obscure looking mark. Although originally the plan was to put some antiquing wax on the sack area, I really love the fact it's so bright and cheerful and white, so I'm going to just seal it with a little bit of this wax now. So how pretty is that? It's gone from an ugly, possibly plum jar to a beautiful strawberry jar. Let's see what this looks like up on my display.
bottle as well. For this project, I'm going to use this glass vase I picked up from the charity shop. It's got almost the texture of a strawberry, so I'm going to turn this into one big fat strawberry vase. I put a bit of masking tape around the neck because this is going to be green. Ooh, my masking tape is losing its stickiness. So let's paint the bottom red. So I'm using a mix of chalk paint and some red acrylic paint as well. Ideally, I would put an undercoat on or something, a little primer, but I don't have any. So we're going straight for two coats of this. So now I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to put a coat of green from the stalk upwards. I'm using this chalk paint mixed with some green acrylic paint to get this colour shade of green. This colour shade, you know what I mean. This is beginning to look much more like a strawberry now, but we need some leaves for the top of the strawberry. Now I know that is not a strawberry leaf, neither is it the right proportion for my strawberry, but I've got a plan because I reckon that even though I don't have any false strawberry leaves, I can cut them out from this. So I'm just going to get my pink in shears and see if I can cut out some strawberry leaves just by cutting leaf shapes out with a serrated edge. And this is what I've come up with. You can see the lines from the Monstera leaf. Well, if you work quite hard, you can get them to be where you need them to be really for a strawberry plant. Now, I'm not sure about the sizes on these. So bring our jar back in and have a look. Yeah, I think they're going to look great. I've got an assortment of sizes, so let's start gluing them on. We've made a start. Now we're going to fill in all around this area here. So now we just need something to finish off in the front there. I think this little strawberry will be perfect. If you want to know how to make them in the next project, I'm going to show you just how easy these are and they're so effective. Pick my strawberry's best side, which I think is about there. Glue the back and pop him in place. Now there are a few places where the paint's got a bit damaged because I rushed this uh, project because paint drying is something that always is so time consuming. So I tend to rush into the next step a little too soon. But I think we'll be fine because I'll just top that up and we, with a little paintbrush and we'll be great. Let's have a look what this looks like up on my display. If you've enjoyed watching my crafts and getting ideas of how you can make your own, then please give me a thumbs up. That would be great and I would really appreciate it. Thank you. This next project I'm really excited about, I think, is going to be fun. A placemat. I've got some of this pretty braid. And I've got some strawberries and some bits of green. I mentioned in the last project I'd teach you how to make these strawberries, and it is so easy. Get yourself a cardboard template, a semicircle. They're about five inches across. This is like slightly bigger. And then halfway across the bottom of it, cut yourself a little notch. Get yourself some fabric. Now, if you pop this, you can pop it there and cut around it, but you're wasting all this fabric. You want this to be close to the edge if you're trying to be economical with your fabric. Draw around it and then cut it out. With right sides together, fold it in half. And then if your notch is central, which mine slightly isn't, you can see where to chop it. But what you're doing really is flattening the bottom of your strawberry. So if you haven't quite put that in the right place, don't worry, just snip the end off the point. Like that. Thread yourself a needle. Now I've used a very large eyed needle because I just find it too fiddly to thread narrower needles now. But you can use a narrower one and it will be easier to use. It can be quite tough getting a thicker needle through this fabric. And then for those of you who don't like sewing, don't worry, it isn't really sewing. It's just poking a peg into a hole. So you get your peg. You poke it through a pretending hole next door to the last one and then pretend there's a hole there, poke your peg in again and then pretend there's a hole there, poke your peg through again, in, out, in, out. And then when you get to the bottom of the point, go back to where there is a little stitch ending there and go back through that hole and down and then up through the last hole. You haven't got to do that, but I think it gives a nicer corner. And then the same right to the top. Just imagine there's a hole there, poke the needle in. And then back out the other way, a little further on. This is what they call running stitch. 
Now, when you get to the top, do what you did last time. Go back to the hole before last and come through and then back down that hole. And then we'll do that once more just to be sure it's not going to unravel. And that's just sealing off your sewing. Now, you need to turn your strawberry in the right way. Now, I know that looks nothing like a strawberry, but stay with it. You'll see where I'm going. About oh, half inch or so, a quarter of an inch, just down a little bit, not too close to the edge, it'll fray. And you do the same thing, but rather than go in and out slowly, I like to sort of do this business. It's quicker. Nice big stitches this time. Don't be tempted to do little ones. It won't work if you do little stitches. And they really don't have to be very uniform at all. And just keep doing this right the way round until you get back to where you started. Can you see how big my stitches are and how ununiform? It really doesn't matter. And try to end your stitches with your needle going outwards for the last stitch. Like that. Now, get yourself some wadding. This is the inside of a pillow that I got from a charity shop. Pop it into the strawberry. Now, you can have it really solidly packed. I like to do them a little bit looser. Now, when you've got your stuffing in, hold it down with your thumb and slowly pull in on your thread. And look, it closes the hole for you. Isn't that clever? Find yourself a convenient sticky up bit. And then... Poke the needle three times through the sticky up bit just to seal it. I'm going to do another one as well, just to be sure. And then you get your thread and poke it back into the strawberry and out somewhere further down. And then you gently pull on the thread, snip it, and that thread will disappear back into the strawberry. And then you'll need to manipulate it a little bit to get it to be the right shape. Now we need some leaves for these strawberries. I've tried various things. I tried some felt, but I thought that was a bit stiff. So I am decided instead to make some out of fabric. Working with the strawberries I'm working with, these are about two inch square. They haven't got to be accurate. Fold them into four. Get your pinking shears, otherwise they will unravel. And then... Cut yourself a sort of leaf shape that ends at the point. Again, don't worry about being too accurate. And then you've got some leaves for the top of your strawberry. You can use all the same fabric or you can use different. Completely up to you. So now you want the right side of your fabric facing up from your strawberry. Pop a blob of glue on the top. Pop your strawberry on, pop your leaf on, and then a tiny bit of glue on the leaves, just a little dot. And you do the same with all the rest. To make a stalk, tie a little knot in some twine, chop off the knot right close to the edge, Get yourself something pointy. I use this pointy thing, as you can see, for lots of things, including paint. Cut yourself off the length of stalk you want. A little dab of hot glue on the end of your string. Not too much. And push it on with something pointy, and you've got a stalk. So there we have some strawberries, but what are we going to do with these? We're going to put them on a bunting, because why not celebrate strawberry season? So we're going to need a placemat. This is an old tatty one. I think I got five or six for a pound from the charity shop. Could even have been 50p. And you can see these are like a plaited raffia, all held together with some stitching. So I'm going to take the stitching off. Snip the stitching all the way around. And then start unravelling until you get to the length you want for your bunting. You can obviously make it as long or as short as you like, it really doesn't matter. 
and finger protectors on and glue each end so that it can't start to unweave itself. So we can put the rest of that away for another day. Now it's no good having a rope for your bunting unless you've got some bunting. So let's have a look at mine. I just cut myself some rough bunting shapes out of some burlap. At first I thought, oh, I need to try to keep these the same size. And then I thought, no, I quite like the idea of them all being different sizes and slightly homemade looking and a little bit on the scruffy side. And I think I achieved that without very much effort at all. And then I cut some triangles that were slightly smaller than the bunting triangles. And all I have to do is a little blob of hot glue on the back and glue them into place like that. And one of the advantages of gluing these, hot gluing your little triangles inside the bigger triangles, is that they will help this raw edge up here which tends to, the side ones are not so bad because they're on a diagonal, but the top ones here tend to fray badly. Snip that one off as well. So these green ones too I decided I'm not going to go for identical sizes. I love the way it looks, almost like you've settled down with some children and you've made this and everybody mucked in and it didn't matter if you were good at craft or not, you could still join in the fun. To add a little bit of interest, I've got these. I picked them up from Hobbycraft, which I assume is like Hobby Lobby. They were half price, so I think I paid oh, two pounds for these possibly. I can't remember now. Like gorgeous little hearts wrapped with like a twiny, it was like quite a woody type feel to that with a little shabby chic bow on the top. I'm going to start with a strawberry. So I'll pop a strawberry on with a little bit of hot glue. There. I measure two inches. I'm hoping this is going to work out. And then I'm going to glue my bunting on. Another two inches, and I'm going to glue on a heart. And then follow that pattern right across every two inches, putting whatever embellishment is that you want to put on next. And now I'm going to take this vine looking decoration, it's made of like a nylon y material, and I'm going to wrap it around the twine or the jute. I'm making sure then that I cover where the strawberries are stuck on. As you go along in the back of each piece of bunting, just glue the decoration along the back and that way then nobody will see the big blobs of glue and you know it's held pretty securely. Well, I love the way this has come out already. I can't wait to see it up on my display, so let's go have a look. I absolutely love it. I bought some transfers. I was going to make just a simple transfer pattern on this jug and my day would be over with and I could go and edit the video and then disaster. The plastic was stuck to the rub on bits. They had no glue left on the bits that you needed it on. So I've ended up with a, a jug with little bits of stuff stuck all over it. And the more I move it, the more it seems to appear. It's everywhere. So I'm now going to come up with a really instant and fast decoration pretty quick. So I've got this lovely red gingham and I'm thinking this would make a lovely bow around this jug. My favourite way to cut material and listen to this. Oh, isn't that fulfilling? Oh, I love it. I'll tie the ends of that into a double knot. And I just happen to have some strawberries left over from the last project, fortunately. So let's have a look. I can get an assorted bunch of these. Oh yes, I think they're going to go quite nicely there. Double knot there. And then tie a double knot on that one. We do have the option to stick all five on. 
think that would not, yeah, I think that's a bit too big. <laughs> I, mean, I think we need a little bit of sensibility here, so that'll do. Now I'm not going to tie them together, that's a bit of a mess. We're having so many false starts, but I'm determined I'm going to make a fifth project with strawberries. I would say if it kills me, but it may well do at this rate. Before I put those on, I think I'll get a little bit of a, a country looking bow on the front there too. And I think I'll do that in cream. Oh, that's going to look very nice. When you're crafting, some things can be really frustrating, but it really stretches you. That you have to think, use your imagination, come up with a different way to the way you were planning. And I think it makes us grow as crafters when things go wrong. So rather than getting all, all fed up or angry if something goes wrong, think to yourself, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to become a better crafter. Hmm, I think I'll pop it just above there because we've got a lot of strawberries to stick on. I'll hot glue that onto there. I think I'll snip a thinner piece of this and make another dangly bit. I'll glue that up there so that you can see the cream bits clearly. And now let's even up some edges because they're very uneven. Look at this. Look at this glue everywhere. It's been one of those days. One of those messy crafting days has been such fun. But oh, you should see my studio. It's a disaster. I'm not dovetailing the edges on these. I want them to look really shabby chic. Pick your best side for your strawberry. I'm going to stick that one there. What's been your worst crafting disaster? Have you ever had something terrible happen? Or have you been really lucky and the worst things happened is a tin of paint has dried up? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments. got some more of the narrow piece that I tore so I'm going to put a little bow on the top oh I just thought I'm going to put a dangly strawberry there too oh I'm enjoying this now I'm really glad that other project went wrong because although it was easy it wasn't really very challenging or much fun this is brilliant I'm thoroughly enjoying it I'm going to undo my bow stick that on there and then redo my bow right for some leaves I've got this bit of foliage not sure what it's off but I reckon we can make these look like strawberry leaves just by snipping them fairly near the bottom of the fingery bits like that and then I'm going to glue them into place behind the strawberries I love that! What a lovely surprise! Because I thought I was just going to end up with something I didn't like and I've ended up with something I think I prefer more than the one I was planning. Oh, that was great fun! Which project do you like the best? Please let me know in the comments below. And I'd just like to say a huge thank you to all the people who watch my channel, who subscribe to me, who leave comments. I really do appreciate you all. Right, let's have a look what this looks like up on my display. If you've enjoyed watching this video, then I'll pop a playlist up there and you can see other videos I've made of making other crafts from various things from various places. I'll see you all next time, but until then, don't forget, have fun! Bye!